Rob and Liz in the morning on his radio. Joe Pollock, you hear Joe coming up between nine and noon, just found out he was an extra in a TV show. He knew, but he could not post till the show aired. Yes. And then the writer's strike. Remember the writer's strike? So that stretched things out a long, long time. And so it got us thinking about, have you ever been in like an extra or in a TV show or a movie or Hosted anything? or Scott Watson, have you ever been on a TV show in a play? No. But I played the uh, tortoise in my first grade production of Tortoise. That in is the Hair. awesome. Oh, that, that yes. is awesome. Uh, you know, so that's been the extent of my uh, acting career there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you All know, right. once you, once you're that good, you just sort of retire out of it. All right. Yeah. I mean, you reach the top, and it's like, hey, that's it. Yeah. It, it hits at first grade. I've been you just, the tortoise. You just yep. move on. Okay, Ninja. How about you? I was in some some films that we made at home. Oh, like a home movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Starring okay. Ninja. Directed Ooh, by I've her been dad. in those too. <laughs> All right. How about you, uh, Jake? I haven't been in any uh, movies or shows or anything like that, but when I was in uh, early, early, early college, I was the March Hare in Alice in Wonderland. And oh. uh, we did this other show called Godspell, which is a retelling of the book of Matthew, and I played Jesus. Oh, wow. Look at that. Jake playing Jesus. Oh, my. He's our own Jim Caviezel. That's right. Yes. Thing. Awesome. Okay, Brian. Um, okay, so I was working in East Tennessee at a radio station, got a call one day, and they said, hey, would you like to have one of the biggest reality TV shows around, stars around on your show? And I'm like, uh, well, it kind of depends on who it is. We're yeah. a Christian station. So I found out who it was, and I said, okay, so I am 15 or 20 seconds of me in the uh, TV show Kate Plus 8. No way. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh my god! Exactly. That's a throwback. Uh, yeah, remember that show? Oh yeah, I remember that show. I think the kids are like forty-five now. I don't. I'm not really oh, sure, my but goodness. So it was so straight. She came in and with the whole entourage, and, the, and we had to sign everything. Didn't sure. know if it would make it onto the show, and, and, it, and it did. Fifteen so, seconds. Yeah, about fifteen seconds or so. We interviewed her on the on the oh, air. Oh, so, so cool! Yeah. So I've been in. Uh, I was an extra in a movie called Leatherheads, with oh. George Clooney and John Krasinski. Okay, I remember and, that movie. Yeah, Renee Zellweger. Okay. And, like, it, we were in period costume because it's, you know, like in the 20s yes. or whatever. They wanted to cut my hair. I said no, so they curled it. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were, <laughs> we had to wear these pantyhose that have the line up the back. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you had to get the line straight, and we had to get dressed in a football field. Like, they had, like, a tent and, you know, we're mm-hmm. fire ants in the pantyhose. Oh, no. Oh, oh. <laughs> It was rough. We were all like, ah! So um, went through the whole day, met George Clooney, met John Krasinski. It was very cool and did not end up in the movie oh, at all. Man. But it was okay because I got to meet, you know, I mean, it was very cool. George Clooney has very soft hands. I will say that. All right. Okay. <laughs> How about, have you ever like ended up in a movie or a TV show as an extra? Or, or maybe you went on a game show and Ooh, got on a game fun. show and Let won something? Us no, 800-447-7234. Melanie texted and she said she was on the TV news when it snowed in downtown Charleston. And they took film of her sister and she they were both playing in the snow. And okay. I guess her sister uh, threw a snowball right in her face she's like how embarrassing oh my god but you know what that's your 15 seconds of fame <laughs> you made it on the that's news right. okay shannon how about you while my kids are insisting i call in and let y'all know that i was played for a car on the price is right years ago what what kind of car i did you know what i don't even remember what kind of car because i didn't win the car but it was fun <laughs> That is so cool. But you actually, so you met uh, Drew Carey. What's he like? Yes, Drew Carey. He was nice, just as energetic as he is on the on the show, and it was a lot of fun. Um, the way to get on The Price is Right is just to make friends with everybody in the audience and um, be really outgoing. And I was the first one called on stage, played for a car, and that's about it. It oh, was that, fun, though. That is so cool. That is so cool, Shannon. Uh, here's the thing, and, and and I love the tip. You know, if you are going to be on a game show, you've got to be uh, just Because really, it didn't work for me. To be outgoing? It did not work to, for me. I did not get picked when I went to The Price is Right. You went to The Price is Right several years ago, right? Yeah, it was like 2010. Okay, 
okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. And they didn't. It was Drew Carey then, too. It was Drew. And he was, oh, my gosh, he was so good. Well, in 1999, I was still working at UNC Chapel Hill, and they filmed Patch Adams with Robin Williams no. on campus. And so I signed up, and I was in the big graduation scene. And you can see the back of my head, but there were a lot of a lot of people in the um, in the scene. But I worked a fourteen hour day for ninety nine dollars. Yes, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. Did you though get yes. to meet Robin Williams or be in close proximity? I was very close. The scene was where he stood on the stage to get his diploma, and they had treated him so badly in the movie in the college because he cared so much for the especially the children they filmed a scene in the children's hospital and the scene was that he gets his diploma and then he turns around and pulls his gown apart and moons the audience (laughs) and he did not use a stand-in it was him every time and they filmed it multiple times (laughs) so yes i got to see him up close and personal (laughs) <laughs> Robin Liz in the morning on his radio. I'm going to go around the room and find out what you believe. So how about you, Scooter? Scott Watson. Well, since Liz is twisting my arm, I'm going to say I believe my Georgia Bulldogs are going to take care of the Mississippi State Bulldogs this weekend. <laughs> okay, well, one thing I do know from that game, the Bulldogs will win. Yes, they will. The bull. One or the other. Hopefully okay. with the G. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ninja, how about you? I believe that Ollie will go to sleep and not scream while doing so. Woo! She's had the best baby. He's been hanging around in the studio. He's just pushing the boundaries. I don't don't hear no peep from him. No, no. He's so good. I'm standing up for Ollie. He's just at night when you're not around. Okay, (laughs) yeah. Jake. I believe that my Clemson Tigers will win this weekend. Look at this football coming out. Oh, my goodness. Who are they playing this weekend? They're playing Wake Forest. Okay. Liz. All right. I believe we are going to have the best birthday parties. I got a birthday party tomorrow for the baby twins or the twin babies. And then I got my oldest son. His birthday party is on Sunday. So Mama's baking a lot this weekend. All right. Mama baking. And Brian. Well, I got to stick with the theme. I believe my West Virginia Mountaineers are going to get a big victory tomorrow night. My goodness Mm. gracious, all the football. What do you believe? Get on the My His Radio app, open mic, and uh, start your sentence with, I believe. I believe I'm going to have an exciting 10th birthday today. I believe that Rob is completely healed in Jesus' name. This is Chris, and I believe that God's going to bless the surgery for Rob today. and It's going to be awesome. Everything's going to go just fine, and everything's going to be amazing. God bless Rob, and God bless his radio. Thank you, guys. Keep praying. I believe I'm going to have a good weekend. I believe that we're going to see a lot of miraculous breakthroughs happening, and that Rob is going to be completely healed and restored. I believe my daughter's surgery is going to go well, and I'm going to get over the sinus infection. I believe... Everything's going to go well with Rob's surgery. I believe it's going to be an awesome weekend. I'm going to be able to spend some good quality time with our pastor's wife and some friends. It's going to be wonderful. Praise God. I believe my birthday will be amazing. I believe that I can pass all three of my quizzes today. I believe that somebody's going to come through with help for my mama to get her home repair finished. We've ran out of options with funding. I believe I'm going to have a great lunch with my daughter today, me and my wife, Lily, and my daughter, Stella. Uh, I believe that she's going to do great in school today and ace all her tests. Thank you, Jesus, for all you do for us. I believe that Jesus is coming back soon. Good morning. I believe that Rob's surgery is going to go amazing, that God will have his hands on Rob and the surgeons, and that I'll get to complete my project this weekend. Good morning, His Radio family. I believe that God is going to perform a miracle in my marriage and we are going to grow closer together as a family and it will be better than I could ever have imagined. Happy Friday. Rob and Liz in the morning on his radio. It's Rhonda and Eric and they were supposed to get married at Glacier National Park. That's where they were going. Okay, hurricane. 
a little thing we mm, are still dealing yeah, with, right? Yeah. Um, and so they are, uh, Rhonda is a first responder for the Henderson County Rescue Squad, and Eric is a retired chief for Skyland Fire Department, okay? okay. So they were supposed to get married on October 2nd. They were going to fly to Glacier National Park at the end of September because they were getting there a couple of days early, obviously, because you got to plan, you got to get things. So they had put down deposits. They had probably, you know, paid caterers and hotel, all this stuff. So they couldn't go. Thankfully, um, they have gotten, I think, some of the money back. I don't know 100% if they got everything back. Come on, give them no money back. I know, right? Come on. But some can say, you know, they call it an act of God, and so we don't have to. That is what they will say. Like, if something like that comes through, they won't give you your money back. Yeah. And it hurts my heart. So anyway, they were like, look. We had our hearts set. We want to get married. Mm-hmm. You know what they did? What? They called in a friend. Okay. A friend shows up. I think they're like in the fire station, and they get married right there. Uh, they both have on their ball caps, obviously, because where they are in western North Carolina, like yeah. they're working. They're first responders. He's mm-hmm. retired, but he's still, you know, I'm sure, pitching in and doing all the things. And they got married right there. Now, they are going to have another wedding have okay. you know the one at uh, glacier national park eventually but for right now they got married they at the got fire married. in the midst of i always love these stories in, in the midst of kind of this chaos and tragedy yes. sometimes these beautiful stories come out in the middle of that and so it was robin and eric it was so, Rhonda and Rhonda Eric. Rhonda and Eric, okay. Yeah, and so Bradley, he actually worked for the Buncombe County Emergency Management, but he's also a chaplain. So he was the one. Now listen, I mean, how many times is there going to be a pastor or a chaplain just right there in the midst of you? Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. It wasn't like they had to call like for hours away or do it over Zoom or anything like that. So he was there. Robin Liz in the morning. On his radio. There's a 10-year-old girl. This happened in uh, Louisiana. Okay. So her name's Paige. Mm-hmm. And she is sleepwalking. And I don't know if this is something that happens all the time, first wow. time, whatever. So she goes out and she gets in the woods. No. Like deep in the woods. Okay. Mom and dad have no idea that she's gone out there. So what they do, obviously, they call the police. They're like, our daughter's missing. Here's what we think may have happened. Um, they send out drones and a trail camera actually really? got a picture of her asleep. On really? the ground. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, and so they were able to pinpoint her. Now, I don't know if the trail camera, like, alerted somebody that there was something there and mm-hmm. how it could differentiate between an animal and a human. Probably the heat. Probably the heat, and they saw some kind of, you well, know. I get it, but, I, I mean, somebody that was looking at that trail camera might go, well, it's probably a bear or coyote or whatever, and thankfully none of those things were in the area at the time. Uh, but they did find her, and they, they got her. <sighs> So in both cases, my case and her case, it all turned out okay. Open mic came in through the My His Radio app. Apparently it is sleep walked, according to Siri. Hmm. Okay. Okay. And Siri, honestly, I think is the expert <laughs> when it comes to is she? It, when it comes to maybe helping us figure out the English language. I don't okay. think you take everything. You have to take it with a grain of salt, I think. Okay. But I think in this situation. But, you know, hearing from English teachers would help, too. Okay. Uh, because we don't know if it slept, walked, sleep, walked. What did she say? Sleepwoken. Sleepwoken. Sleep, no, sleep, uh, sleep walked. Okay. Sleep walked Which still feels was. weird coming off the tongue. Uh, sure it does. Yeah. So. But sleepwalking. So You've never done that before. Huh? I have never done that. We did have a girl that we took on vacation with us, one of my daughter's friends, and she didn't sleepwalk, but I will tell you, and I have to back up a little bit. Here's what she did. Middle of the night, 2 a.m. <laughs> really? <laughs> and I was like, what is happening? And she was dead to the world asleep. Oh, my gosh. And I thought, is she okay? Like, baby girl, are you all right? <sighs> okay, you're okay. fine. Sure. Okay, but but Ninja, morning show producer Ninja, evidently has somebody in her life that sleepwalks. Yes, so my husband sleepwalks, sleep talks, sleep responds. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah, and so this was maybe a few weeks after we brought baby Ollie home, and I was watching TV. The baby was sleeping, and Dusty was sleeping, <laughs> and he woke up out of a dead sleep so fast, ran over to the corner of the room where we keep our blankets in a little basket and was rummaging through the blankets, like throwing them. And I was like, babe, what are you doing? What are you doing? He's like, I'm looking, I'm looking for the baby. And I was like, 
what? And he's like, yeah, he's 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 cold. He, he's he got to be cold. And I was like, what are you doing? Like, why would the baby be in the basket? And he was like, because he got cold. He wanted to come cuddle in the blankets. I was like, baby's right here. Oh and then goodness. the next morning I asked him about it, and he didn't remember. Mm. He was. So were his eyes awake? They I were. I mean, uh, open? I thought he was awake, but he did not remember mm. this happening. See? But I thought he was awake. In, in my mind, sleepwalking, you have your eyes closed, mm. but I guess not. I don't, I, yeah, yeah, I think they're open. I mean, because you'd be running into things and stuff like that. I guess that. so. That's the odd. I think probably the the most upset one time my wife got at me is like she was sleep talking and I started having a conversation with her and she got mad at that conversation we're having because I was trying to have a conversation with her. In the Even though the she's yeah, it was the middle of the night, so <laughs> she started having these conversations. She was talking about stuff and then she was. And she started crying and stuff. I'm like, oh, it's just, uh, it's just. Next time, get it on video. <laughs> Robin Liz in the morning on his radio. Robin Liz in the morning. It is his radio. Brian sitting in for Rob today, and I found something that I thought I had already passed out here at the at work, um, and it's from my cruise that I went on. What three weeks ago or whatever it was. Um, it was like three months ago. It was not. It was a long time ago. Maybe it was a month ago. Oh, okay. I know. So I, I bought like a lot of souvenirs and I bought candy and I thought everybody had already gone through it and tried it and whatever, but I found these. And when I bought them, I thought they were chocolates, like chocolate cookies. And then they are not. So I want you to try. It's like it's that glitter all over it. It does. It's, it's like sanding sugar is what they call it. And so everybody has some except for... Me, because I've already tried it. Sanding sugar? Sanding sugar is a little um, more coarse, a little thicker, and it gives it that more glittery kind of a... I'm not going to tell you what I think it looks like, what? but, okay. you know. <laughs> uh, now we're smelling it. Ninja Morning Show producer smelling it. Now Brian's smelling it. Got a little maple smell to it. Mm -hmm. You want to trade? They're the same exact. Is it the same exact? They're the same exact thing. Mine's Even blue. They just put them in different colors. Just to be fancy. But these are from Italy. <laughs> I'm scared. Brian's already uh, had a bite. Is it sweet Ew. or sour? Yeah. I, just not, I can't really describe it. Jake? Ugh. Ugh. And then um, Jeff. No, never mind. Mine's no. blue on the inside. Is it's blue on the inside? You don't get better. No way, what? Um, you don't get uh, better. No. I have not seen one that's different. Yeah, so I don't know what these are exactly. I think you could use them as a weapon, too. You could, because it, it is a little harder than... And that's why I thought it was a cookie. Or a because it, softener. <laughs> <laughs> Robin Liz in the morning. On his radio. Imagine. So Amy and her husband, Will, are trying to sell their house. They live in Jacksonville, Florida, and so they're in and out rushing, trying to get it ready for like a real estate agent to come by. And so as Amy's walking through the house, she keeps hearing a kitten under the floorboards. And so she's trying to find where this cat is at for seven hours. Oh, that's so good. Seven that hours. She looks. She's trying to find a kitty cat. It's making she's well, she keeps hearing this noise under the floor. He's hungry. Yeah. And okay. so she finally calls her husband Will and he comes home and they're searching for the cat. They break out a can of tuna and they climb under this crawl space and they get like a headlamp. They're trying to find this cat. And so then she goes, I got to get things ready. So she ran out outside again and she came back in to change clothes and she realized her sandals had got wet and they were squeaking on the floor and she spent seven hours looking for the cat that was just her sandals making the squeak noise on the floor. That is amazing that they spent seven hours. I don't know how her husband didn't. Will, dude, like, how did you not notice? Because... I, I guess I can see if you're wearing them and you hear it. You're not necessarily thinking your shoes are making the noise. Somebody else, though, ah. should have picked up on it. Rob and Liz in the morning on uplifting and encouraging his radio. This is, I mean, Western North Carolina and this time of the year, man, a lot of people head there for tourism. 
uh, for things, for the apple picking and things like that. And a lot of the areas you can't get into a lot of, you know, because of the damage from the storm. But there's still some places people go for the apple picking, including our very own Ninja. How did it go yesterday, Ninja? It was good. It was a lot of fun. It took the, the baby and my sister's in town. So she bought him a cute little, I called it farmer baby outfit. <laughs> <laughs> and we took the you know fall girl photos that is so on the, on cute. the socials um and you can see this on his radio place. plus if you want to see yes. the baby in his little farmer outfit doing and and so where did you go we went to a place called sky top um and in years past it would be packed mm-hmm. like lines out the door for their apple cider donuts um but there were there was not that many people there we also went there on on a thursday but still usually there's a lot more people um so I think, if you can get there safely go right. out and support your local orchard well and i think that's the the thing is maybe you know we don't know that these places are open i mm-hmm. did see where justice orchard um also in western north carolina uh is is open and you know they said the bakery is open i was like i'm there mm-hmm. um but there's a couple of different you know uh places where you can go apple picking and they are open so i'd love to hear about that like if you know yeah. of one that is uh operational that be fantastic because you know they are used to making tons of money this time of year and they got a crop that is not going to stay around it's going to run i mean it's going yeah. to waste and that's you know that's their whole business yeah. for this year they do so well and, and i know sky top was one of those places that did not get impacted mm-hmm. as much by helene and people bro- didn't know they, no, that you it, don't they know. were probably still open, but they've been i know they've been doing collection drives yeah. as well for people in western north carolina so my favorite time of the year. I, I just got a question, Ninja. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where's those apple cider donuts?